Hi, we're going to talk about Shelties today. Are you looking to get a Sheltie? Do you have a Sheltie? We're going to discover some of the basics about Shelties. So we've broken down this into uh, six basic uh, areas that we're going to talk about today. Um, one is just going to be the history, and then we're going to go on to some of the physical traits, and then we will go on to the personality, which is probably the biggest one that we're most interested in. And then we're going to go into some general health conditions that you can expect with your Sheltie. Just a quick review of finding a breeder. This is like a whole nother video on itself. And then we're just going to kind of summarize everything and kind of review what we've uh, talked about. So first, let's just go over the history. Um, Shelties are from the Shetland Islands. And the reason they're so small is they needed to be bred small due to the harsh conditions and limited resources on the island. Um, they're known as Shelties, but their official name is a Shetland Sheepdog. And they're often confused as mini rough collies, and they are not mini rough collies. They've had a completely separate and unique breeding history from the rough collie. And there is no documented proof or examples of what they were crossbred with to um, create the Sheltie. Originally, they were called Toonie Dogs, and the word Toon in Shetland Islands is slang for farm. So basically farm dogs. Toonie dog is a farm dog. So you sometimes hear them, hear them referred to as that. They were first recognized by the American Kennel Club in 1914, and they are currently ranked number 20th in popularity among dogs with the American Kennel Club. Uh, the next section we'll kind of go on to is the physical traits. And obviously one of the most obvious physical traits is the beautiful Shelty coat. It's what is called a double coat. So one coat is for warmth, and the other coat is for protection from the rain and the snow. With that double coat, of course, there is a lot and lot of shedding. Generally speaking, if they've been spayed, they'll only go through one shed of their coat a year. If you have an unspayed dog, it will go through two sheds a year. But one guarantee, you're going to have dog fur in your house all year long. The lifespan of a Sheltie is between 12 and 14 years. And the height of a Sheltie at the withers, which is basically the shoulder blades, is 12 to 16 inches. And as you can see, our Sheltie is much, much smaller than the standard. So they are herding dogs, so they need a lot of work and exercise, and they were bred to work. So it's what they enjoy doing, being out on the farm and working hard and chasing things all day. You'll need to walk them multiple times a day. Our Sheltie gets three walks a day for at minimum of two hours a day between all three of those walks. Failure to provide proper exercise will lead to behavior issues as they are very, very smart dogs and will become frustrated. Letting them out in the backyard does not suffice for a walk and interaction with the outside world. They need to get out and explore as they're curious and intelligent dogs. Next, we'll just go on to the personality, which is kind of the biggest section here and probably most relevant for for people if they're looking to get a Sheltie and bring a Sheltie into their home. Um, they are a very, very smart dog. They are ranked number sixth out of 138 dogs. So they are very, very intelligent. It's like having a person in the house. They're great watchdogs. They have a loud, piercing bark. It's not high-pitched, it's not deep, but it is piercing. They're very territorial. They guard the house as if it was their own and they had purchased it. They are very, very possessive of their owners and their owners' safeties. Like I've said before, they need to have a job to do, like guarding the house, agility, sports, anything to keep them active that makes them feel like they're participating. They are also very, very sensitive and need positive reinforcement. This is not a dog that will respond to a heavy hand. They're very sensitive to noise and very sensitive to their owner's personalities and moods. If they're upset, the dog will pick up on that. So you need to make sure that you've got a, a generally stable household without a lot of yelling or a lot of aggressive behavior. So as they are herding dogs, they tend to follow you everywhere. Owners will often refer to Shelties as their shadows, as they will follow them from room to room constantly. Our Sheltie, for instance, will never be between, let me get between the front door and the dog without the dog being in the middle. As they are herding dogs again, they will herd anything small, birds, other animals, children, 
things like that. And they even like to try and herd you and keep you together as people. They're wonderful with children, but sometimes we'll nip at small children to try and herd them like they're herding livestock. Children need to handle the Sheltie with respect. This is not a golden retrieval that will take anything from a child. Great with children, but the children need to understand respect for the dog so that it responds positively. It's also very, very important with such a highly intelligent dog that they're socialized very early to break bad habits, as these will only get worse with age. Now, Shelties can be standoffish with strangers, but each one tends to have a slightly unique personality. But my Sheltie just loves to run up to people and meet new people. But in general, as a breed, breed, they are standoffish with strangers. And they also can be a bit stubborn. One example is when if we deviate from the walk in just like five feet and walk down a different sidewalk, my Sheltie likes to sit down and protest and say, I don't want to go there because this isn't the route we usually take. So they're very smart, very happy with the routine. They can go from extremes very, very fast. They can go from laying around the house, sleeping, and instantly go to 100 miles an hour barking at the window if another dog comes by. They are, like I said before, excellent, excellent watchdogs. Sometimes I would say too good, and they pick up on every single noise that they find. Shelties are considered to be generally healthy dogs, but they do have some health conditions. They have what's a condition that's known as collie eye anomaly. A good breeder will have tested for this. Make sure to ask. That's very important. They are also prone to epilepsy. And they do have a hip dysplasia, but this is usually due to an overweight condition in the Sheltie. They also tend to have get hypothyroidism on rare occasions, and they have four times the chance of bladder cancer as compared to other dogs. They are a very healthy and hardy dog, but they do have these few health conditions that you need to be aware of. Next, we're going to go on to finding a breeder. Now, this should be a whole separate video, so you might want to do a search on YouTube for some other videos about picking a breeder, but I'm just going to go over some of the basics. Um, some of the things you want to ask the breeder is how long have they been breeding, what tests and vaccines have been given, can you see the mother and father, and if the mother and father aren't available, just see if there's a picture. Um, another thing is if they're AKC registered, I know this is a little bit controversial. I just feel it's a good idea to make sure there's some sort of lineage and history. It's, an, uh, it's a good idea and just to make sure that they're not coming from a puppy mill. The breeder should not be pushing you trying to make the sale. They should be asking questions of you too, asking the conditions that the dogs will live in and their lifestyle. Many breeders will actually take the dog back if you're not able to take care of it in a proper manner anymore. So that's just another thing to ask. And one of our breeders once told us sometimes the correct decision is not to get a dog. And that's what really sold me on this breeder, that I knew she really cared about where her dogs were going and what was going to happen to them and their lifestyle they'd have. Thanks for watching. I hope this has been informative and possibly helpful. If you have any questions at all, please don't hesitate to reach out to us or any other members on the channel.